everyone, uh, I'm Darren. Welcome to another episode of The Boardroom. We've seen a lot of you guys asking about character customization, clothing, brands, and boards, and what you can expect to see in Skate. So we thought it'd be cool to grab three key members from the team here to chat about how you'll be able to express yourself and make your mark in St. Amsterdam. So let's kick it off with some intros. Jeff, can you tell me who you are, what you do, and what you're most excited about the project? I'm Jeff, I'm a character art director on the project. I'm a skateboarder, so every, every day is exciting on the project. I'm just stoked to be making something that, that expresses skateboarding to the world. Yolanda? Hi, I'm Yolanda, and I'm a user experience designer on the team, so I'm responsible for how players create or customize their characters. And personally, I'm also a gamer who just loves to dress up my characters and spend time changing my face. So I'm very excited that I got to design the feature that I'm most passionate about. Nick? Yeah, hi, I'm Nick. I'm a lead product manager on the team. That means that I help out on the production side. I work with people like Jeff and Yolanda. Um, we, do, we want to do a lot of things on Skate, but first we have to figure out how much we can do, like what we can do and what we should do. Uh, so I help make those decisions and help the team be as informed as we can about those decisions. Maybe we can take a moment and zoom out a little bit and talk about like where we've been, where we're trying to get to from a directional perspective with characters. Absolutely, yeah. We're part of an existing franchise. We're this new installment and we're looking to hit the kind of art direction that's going to bring and welcome as many people to skate and, and skateboarding by proxy. Jumping off from the, the, the previous installments in the franchise, we go back, you look at it, it's actually quite stylized. We're running with it, we're going to try and evolve that. Again, try and make that as appealing to a broad range of people as possible. You know, one of the big things that inspired us was looking at skateboarding, at skateboard culture. There's no one way to look in skateboarding. There's no one one style of skateboarding. Especially now, yeah. Absolutely, more so than ever. I mean, you look at deck art, you look at the brand logos, there's, there's so much visual creativity. And that kind of gave us that kind of that permission to, to really go ahead and try and bring as much expression to the characters and how they look and as much personality as we can to the characters. There's still a balance between, you know, realism and some stylization. Obviously, the game being stylized in the past and, you know, trying to bring it into today. And it's, really, it's a really interesting approach because typically, you know, an art style is kind of across all of the things and Absolutely. we're taking kind of a hybrid version where recognizing the things that are most important to, to to land from a realistic or realism perspective and then finding avenues and opportunities for exploration for like injecting personality. And obviously like we're not there yet. I mean as as we're seeing we're still like, working on we're it. Still, we're still working on it. We're so, always working on it. You know, <laughs> as we say like please, you know, continue to give us feedback on all of the yeah. things that you're seeing in game and help us steer as we said like everything that you guys are are, you know, commenting and providing feedback on is informing the decisions we're making. Yolanda, what was exciting to you about like our, the character philosophy when you joined the team? Yeah, I just want to um, add on to Jeff's points. I think self-expression, accessibility, and inclusivity are definitely the core of skate culture. And I really like how skateboarding is um, providing a platform where everyone is encouraged to explore and push their boundaries without gender limitation. So when I joined the team, I was very surprised to see like all of our characters are genderless. I think that's also what we want to provide our players with in the customization experience, like the ability to fully express yourself, be whoever you want to be in the game. Um, so I think we want to provide that freedom and flexibility to players. It's so great. Um, and one of the things I love that we're doing in that space is no matter what the player chooses to do and how they create or customize their body, any of those expressions can wear anything in the wardrobe. There's no, there's no exclusivity between something that is perhaps a masculine item or a feminine item or anything else. It's anybody can wear anything. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's an honor, it's also like a responsibility yeah. to be a proper reflection of the culture, Absolutely. which I think, you know, we're doing our best to do. And, and I think I've said this before, but like to be the representation of what the culture is today versus what it, it was, mm -hmm. you know, 14, 13, whatever amount of time it was since the last skate. The way that we're approaching characters, I think, is like one of the most exciting elements that we have Absolutely. For, for the franchise. Well, I feel like we could talk about that forever, but I know, Yolanda, we gave you kind of like a homework assignment. Yeah. So let's take a look at your character and, you know, kind of walk us through some of the decisions. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so this is the character that I used recently in the game. Personally, I want to be someone who is completely different from how I look in real life. Like, I want to change my hair color every day in the game. Whereas in real life, um, I'm always hesitant to do so because, you know, like, it's hard to maintain. <laughs> and for the board, I picked this um, 
this grip tape that has a Sanvan text on it. So I think it really offers me a sense of belonging to this virtual city of Sanvan. I really like all the different deck art options that we have right now. It's, they are all very artistic and expressive. Stickers. Yeah, oh, I wanted curious. to come yeah. on your yeah. sticker here. I love how you put the star <laughs> sticker on his head. It's perfect. I picked this sticker uh, because I want my board to be unique. So that's why I picked this one. I think lastly, I also picked the light green color for the wheels um, to echo with the rest of the color palette. So I overall feel like customizing the board is really like making an art piece, which is very mm -hmm. fulfilling. I like the checkerboard pen. <laughs> it's, you know, the, the deck, the way people set up their deck is so so personal and so important. You know, there's so much you can do in there. There's so much customization. It's, uh, it's, it's like a little art form in itself, a little medium in itself almost. You know, you're picking out your deck art, you're picking out the colors of things. The thing I'm most excited about is the different heights mm -hmm. um, for the characters, which we've never had before and totally affects the way that you look skating or oh, yeah. feel skating. And so if there's anything that I like do play around with, it's it's that in the yeah. body shapes. It's it's totally different. It's super, super exciting. Well, like the way the animation adapts to that, like the systems yeah. that the folks have, um, on the team have put together, like the fact that you can have all those different things and yet you can still do all, all the animations work, all the points of contact are there. Like super impressive. It's a non-trivial amount. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With that inspiration from Yolanda's character, let's get into clothing and footwear and what it means for players inside Sense of Amsterdam. Jeff, can you start us off talking about, you know, the team's overall approach with direction and bringing these items to life? I mean, obviously, like we talked about, we want the player to be able to wear all kinds of different things to express the, the, the person that they are or the person that they want to be or whoever, whatever it is they want to put together. We're going to see that, that core skate stuff that we, we find in streetwear and in other places. You know, alongside that and gradually we want to bring in things which are not necessarily the kind of things that you would see somebody wearing in a skate park where you see a pro skater wearing, allowing people to, to get into slightly broader fashion, you know, starting to bring in some high street stuff. Nick, can you give us a little bit more, you know, insight into what we're doing with our rewards and our clothing and game currently? Obviously, the branded stuff, the things from our real-world brands are super popular. Um, that's unsurprising. Some of the things that were a little more surprising were like the um, popularity of our skeleton outfit. It's like a skeleton mask plus a bodysuit that looks like someone painted a skeleton bones onto it. We've set it up as one of the things that's harder to get, and it's become this prestigious thing that players are showing off. It's great to see that things that aren't from real-world brands are also popular and people like them. So. I also think it's a good representation of the way that we want to approach that kind of clothing option, like the things that you might not see at the skate park down the street, but it's not totally unrealistic to see someone wearing it or skating in it. It's believable. It looks like you might have made it at home. It's grounded in reality, and maybe you just wore it today because that's the mood that you were in. And then, you know, that, that just, that's an ongoing balance of, of finding that right balance of, of how much stuff is really real world, really, really grounded versus stuff that's a little bit more out there. You know, that's something we're going to be listening very carefully with our feedback. If you really don't love that stuff, we can adapt that and we can provide more options in other areas. So it's going to be a real learning experience um, and, and having the players inform us along the way, that's, that's really going to help us get there. Okay, so there's going to be a ton of available gear and shoes and boards for players to get excited about. What does that mean for the players that want to earn their rewards versus ones that are willing to spend? Your time in skate is going to be valued. Like, we're stoked that you're playing the game. We're going to reward you for playing regardless of how you play or how much you play. We want you to be earning rewards, getting the customization options that you want, feeling like you're making progress in the game. Like, it should be a positive experience for everyone. So even if you don't spend, you'll be able to get things that you're hyped about and customize your character in, in a unique way. But like a real skate shop, uh, we need to keep our lights on. So there's going to be a store for the people that want to spend. There's going to be cool clothing options for you to look at. As a live service game, um, it gives us the ability to continue to update the game and refresh content and you know, be timely and representative of the culture. Like maybe you guys can shed a little bit more light on our goals there. Oh, it's totally like launch is just the beginning, right? Like that's this is it's the launch pad, if you will. Like there is so much more to come. Absolutely, and it's going to be go beyond just the brands and the types of things that we bring in. Like there will be completely new types of clothing that you can wear, and there will be new ways to engage with brands, or we'll have new events. Like I think being a live service, we can capitalize on what's cool, what's interesting right now, and 
look for ways for our partnerships to um, to take advantage of that. So there's more content, potentially for more events. I mean, Yolanda, is there going to be more customization options, potentially? On the feature side, like for player customization, uh, I think the feature will also be evolving based on player feedback. There might be more options that we add in. And for character creation, we are already planning um, what's going to come out after, after MEP. So there's actually a lot of things that we want to do, but just we have to do it step by step. We mentioned brand partners a few times. I feel like that's probably the thing that people are really excited to hear about. They're super core and super important to us to establish a baseline for uh, the, our identity in terms of what we're wanting to represent, right? And so maybe you can speak to that. The idea is to be able to have these these bigger, more, let's say, lifestyle brands, getting down to more core skate brands where it's, you know, part of the fabric of skateboarding, like things like Girl and Chocolate that we've shown already. Uh, these brands have been around for a long time. They're, they're, they're icons. But then also, you know, we've also shown working with, with local skate shops or more like hyper-local places. They're doing super interesting things visually. They've got so much, they, they bring such a credibility and such a authenticity and, and genuineness to things. So we want to have all kinds of different things in the game. But the one that we're, we're really focusing on right now is Vans. You. Van Doren Rubber Company. Now, they've been around forever. They're part of the fabric of skateboard history. The original skate shoe. Oh yeah, like the, the old school is like 50 years old nearly. The half cab is, 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 is already past the 30 year mark. These are, these are icons of skateboarding, of fashion. You know, they, trans, they transcend skateboarding. You know, Vans is very much a, a lifestyle and skateboarding brand, and that's perfect for us. That, that aligns so well with our goals of, of being more than just core, core, you know, skateboarding stuff. The great thing with Vans and with some other, the, the bigger shoe companies is they make all these shoes in 3D. They have them for marketing purposes, so we get the 3D model from Vans. Like, it's, you, you can't really get a, a pure source of reference, perhaps. Every detail, every stitch is on there, every logo, like literally the print on the pop kush, like sole on the inside there is, is, is in that file. But you know, that's not meant for a video game. So we take that, we optimize that to a degree, we get it into something that runs in a real time context. We apply our, our art style to that thing. We start making all the different colorways and you know, we work with Vans to, to identify which colorways we want to work on with this stuff. They send us exactly like, you know, the, the perfect color, the Pantone. The, exactly, the Pantones come through, the types of textiles in there that sometimes we've never heard of. So hopefully you can have that relationship of like, I skate these in, in the game, I wear these or I skate these in real life, and you feel that connection there between the, the game and, and the real world. And then, now that we've got that shoe in the game, it's like a platform for us to build on, because yeah. the hard work, well, the hardest work, was building the shoe itself. Oh, totally. Um, but now we can look at new colorways as we you know, go into the future. Once that silhouette's new. established in the game. Yeah. That's exactly, yeah. and, and that, that echoes the real world. You, you make you product develop a sneaker or a t-shirt, whatever it is, you get the fit, the cut right. If we can start to have that conversation with sneaker culture, it would be so fantastic. You know, imagine we get our colorway that we've, we've designed with a company in the game, and then imagine one day that comes out in the real world and suddenly we're, we're, we're part of that conversation with, with fashion, with skateboarding. So that's a wrap for today. As always, a big thank you to you guys for watching and coming along the ride with us. And of course, a thank you to Jeff and Yolanda and Nick for being here. If you haven't signed up to play yet, please sign up. Become a Skate Insider for your chance to play with us in San Amsterdam. We're stoked to invite even more people um, coming up. I I'm not sure if you remember, but like we're going to be doing console playtesting this year, which is super exciting. So yes, please sign up, become a Skate Insider, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.